Hey guys, you wanna hear a joke? Knock knock. Who's there? Writer's block. Writer's block who? I couldn't finish this joke because I have writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> the things lack of sleep and writer's block will do to you. Well, uh, decided since I have writer's block and I can't really get nowhere, I'm going to go ahead and just start doing videos again because I got my recording studio back. Hooray! So, without further ado, before I make this intro a little bit too long, Flutter 12. The entire force of 14 guards were up now, with Captain Crystal Dash taking the lead. They arrived near the site of the attack. Show me where you were standing, Crystal ordered the lucky guard. I was right here facing Corporal Snow. It was unreal what happened. One second we were talking, and the next he was gone. It was a dark shadow, so fast and silent. Crystal looked down at the guard where Snow had been standing. His hoofprints were there, leading up to this point, then nothing leading away. Spread out and search. There must be some clue left behind by the attacker. Sir, the guard saluted and docked to work. It was still dark, but they all carried light stones. The search was fruitless. No tracks, broken twigs, nothing. Crystal looked up the road toward the home of Carrot Top. His last visit here had not been a pleasant one either. He knew further up the road was Fluttershy's home. She had been evacuated and been living with Rainbow Dash. The captain shivered slightly from the odd chill in the air. It felt like he was being watched. Captain, the private who had been in with snow approached, just like last time we were here, there's no evidence. Whatever we are dealing with isn't natural. I agree. The only survivor is Fluttershy. Crystal looked back toward town. We need to question her again. The private nodded. Shall I go get her? No. Bringing her out in the open may be a very bad idea. It's possible that this thing may try to go after her. Of course, Captain. The sound of a twig snapped in a nearby bush caught all of the guards' attention. They turned to see the pink pony emerge from the bushes. Oh, hello! Pinkie Pie grinned, looking bright and cheery. What all are you doing here? Having a party? Crystal stepped forward. Ma'am, this is not a safe place to be right now. It can't be as bad as the Everfree Forest. The mess was really messy. Mess? The captain raised an eye. Oh yes, bits and pieces all over the place. She reached over her shoulder and pulled out a sword. Found this though. It looks like one of yours. Where did you find it? In the forest. I can show you where. Crystal nodded. You're Pinkie Pie, right? One of Rainbow Dash's friends, right? Pinkie hung her head, looking sad. Yep, I'm really sad she died, but I'm happy knowing that you're here to protect all of us. She placed a sword back at her side. I'll show you where I found this. The scene was gory, to see the least. The remains of snow were strewn about the small clearing. What little there was left of the poor guard pony. Blood splattered the trees, bushes, and rocks. As expected, there was no sign of the head. See? A messy mess. Pinkie Pie's ears twitched a little. Say, anyone who else know how quiet it is? Oh yes, indeed it was quiet. No nighttime creatures could be heard. Not even insects. They were still. It was very unnerving. Sir, so, the private who had been teamed up with Snow looked just as scared as the rest of the team. I think we should get out of here. Crystal nodded. Gather up Snow's remains and let's head back to Ponyville. Hey, where's Redleaf? Another guard asked, noticing that the pony that had been right beside him moments ago was gone. Circle formation! Crystal suddenly ordered. In seconds, the 13 guards were facing outwards from a protective circle with Pinkie Pie in the center. Protect the civilian! He drew his sword, as did every other pony who had one, including Pinkie Pie. Pinkie was grinning as she eyed Crystal Dash's vulnerable back. He was so scared, so vulnerable. She glanced to her left and watched as a white streak dropped from above and suddenly made off with the talkative private. The two ponies on either side of him had not even realized he was missing. At least, not until his corpse hit the ground at the edge of the small clearing, his throat ripped out. This caused panic and three of the younger guards bolted, screaming for their mommies. They bolted all in different directions. Their crashing through the bushes were cut short one at a time, and only the last one had a chance to scream before falling silent. And then there were ten, Pinky whispered in a creepy voice, just loud enough to make all remaining ten guards' manes and tails go on in. Crystal spun around, glaring at Pinkie Pie. You! You let us hear! Pinky giggled maniacally. You should watch your back, Cappy! Her eyes were uneven, and that crooked grin was not one of a sane pony. A scream from his right, and another guard vanished. The remaining guards moved away from Pinkie Pie and next to the captain. As her blue eyes turned to blood red, Pinkie Pie laughed. Your numbers are dwindling. What will you do? If you run, one or two of you might make it out of the forest, but will you even make it to Ponyville? You're the one behind these disappearances? Oh, Cappy, do you think that little pink amino Diane Pie is the one you should be focusing your attention on? 
You're down another bear. Crystal looked, and a quick head count. He was indeed down to six, seven if he included himself. Retreat! Back to Ponyville! He took the lead, remembering the way back easily. He heard another scream and a sickening crunch behind him. Six, he thought. From having fourteen under his command, he was down to five left. A quick glance back and his blood ran cold. One, he slowed, and back toward the edge of the forest, praying these things might not follow him out. A pair of glowing red eyes opened in the dark path before him, the light from his lightstone glinting off a length of metal. Pinky? He was answered by the maddening giggle. Giggle at the ghosties! And she lunged forward. Crystal parried with the sword and was pushed back. The mare, she was no trained fighter. But she moved like she was dancing, and she was fast, almost impossibly fast. Still, he was just as fast, and he was a trained fighter. Sure, he never had thought he ever really need to actually fight, but he did have the basic training. Pinkie Pie would attack quickly, moving almost in ways that were impossible for a pony to move, never mind attack from. She kept the captain on her, his guard, and finally managed to get a slick nick of, on his, of his shoulder. I win! She giggled and bounced around and stood triumphantly on her hind hose. Captain Crystal Dash saw this as an opportunity. He had never killed another pony, or any creature before. But as he buried the sword into Pinkie Pie's chest, he felt sick to his own stomach. He released the grip on the sword and staggered back, staring at Pinkie, who was still standing upright on her hind legs, confused and painful look in her eyes. But I won! She coughed up blood and staggered, falling to all four hooves. You cheated! She gasped out before falling to her side. Crystal stepped back and felt his leg shaking. His version blurred, and the small nick on his neck was burning like it had been rubbed with salt. He looked down at Pinky's dropped sword and saw the black substance on it. Poison? He coughed and staggered, leaning against a tree. Princess, we failed. His vision went black, and he felt no more. Pinkie Pie had never felt pain like this before. Her chest burned, and it was hard to breathe. Mother walked up, an actual look of concern on his face. He was evil and cruel, a predator, but when it came to his mother, he was a good son, mostly. Shh, Blackthorn, Flutter smiled. My friend Pinkie Pie will be all right. She then leaned down and whispered in Pinkie's ear, I won't let you die. Pinky gritted her teeth as Flutter pulled the sword from her chest. A moment later, the yellow creature stung her in the shoulder. This venom I injected you with will keep you from dying, but it will slowly paralyze you for a short while. Pinky nodded as she felt her body growing weaker from the loss of blood. Flutter's horn started glowing. Moss, leaves, and vines floated over and were used to bind the puncture wound. The process hurt like mad, but Pinkie Pie didn't cry out. She only whimpered. As Flutter finished, she turned to Blackthorn. Sweetie? Yes, mother? Pinkie Pie is a dear friend. You understand, correct? I will treat her as you would treat her. The handsome monster nodded. He knelt next to Pinkie Pie. I can heal her, but it will be very painful. Flutter raised an eye. How? Blackthorn smiled at his mother. Remember when you were stung? No, but I believe that's how I became pregnant with you. It is. But the thing that stung me died. Flutter shook her head. I won't let you die like that. Mother, I will be all right. I won't be stinging her. What will you do? First, for her to live, she must come close to death. I'll take her home and begin. Will you be all right with disposing of the evidence? Yes, I'm fine. Flutter looked down at the captain. I still haven't eaten yet. Blackthorn shook his head. Don't eat him. He's been poisoned. It tastes really bitter. Pinkie Pie was glad for Flutter's venom that coursed through her veins. It meant she would not be dying from her internal bleeding. Still, it hurt so much. Heck, she knew she would be dead right now. She couldn't move at all as Blackthorn set her down on the floor and of his huge tree home. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. You're an important friend of my mother's. He walked out of Pinky's line of vision, allowing her to see a familiar orange pony. Carrot Top? Carrot Top watched her. A strange, dazed look on her face, almost like she didn't know who she was looking at. A metal collar was around her neck, connected to a chain that was hooked to a wall. Blackthorn stepped back into view. Now, Pinkie Pie, was it? I'm going to be doing something quite painful to you, but I am not harming you. Right now, you're drowning in your own blood, and I'm going to have to deal with that. He opened his mouth, his fangs growing long and thin. He bit down onto her neck, piercing her jugular. Pinkie would have cried in pain, but she simply couldn't. She could feel him sucking out her blood. Her entire body started feeling deathly cold, but she was still alive. Aw, Blackthorn then pulled back, blood dripping from his mouth. Don't worry, 
I'll be doing you quite a favor now. His tail rose up, the stinger coming toward her neck. Wait, his venom. It's deadly. A small cut killed Cappy. He's going to kill me. Fluttershy! She mentally screamed. Shh, it's alright, Pinky. Fluttershy's voice echoed soothingly in her mind. He isn't going to kill you. Pinky felt the needle thin dinger pierce her neck and start pumping in lots of fluids. He's stinging me. Fluttershy, please help me. I'm scared. It's okay, Pinkie Pie. Blackthorn whispered softly. I'm giving you your blood back. Mixed with mine. You'll start hearing quickly now. Pinkie was actually starting to feel the pain slowly receding. She was also starting to gain her ability to move. Her body was warming back up, and a feeling of euphoria swept through her. Black thorn, she managed to speak. Almost done. He gave a final pump of blood and pulled the stinger out. There, you should be feeling better quickly. Pinky could move again, and the pain and discomfort was fading away, being replaced by a rush of energy that flowed through her body. She sat on the side with delight. I'm, I'm okay. Oh, thank you, Black Thorn. He smiled, his teeth back to their normal feline ones. Mother asked I save you, and I have. He smiled as he walked around her, looking at her from all angles. You are very cute. Much better looking than her. He pointed at Carrot Top with his tail. Carrot Top? We thought she was dead. Nope, she's very much alive. <laughs> she's my plaything. Though I believe I broke her. Her mind, that is. He chuckled. Ever seen a normal pony eat meat? Ponies can't eat meat? Pinky replied. Then took on a thoughtful look, hoof on chin. What does it taste like? What's it feel like in your mouth? She licked her lips. As she did so, she felt her teeth. Small things were felt by her tongue. Would you like to try some? Flutter asked as she landed, the body of one of the guards dropping on the floor. It's so wonderful. Pinky stared at the guard. Flutter shy, I, I don't know. It's alright, Pinky. Blackthorn rested a wing over her back. My blood is changing you. I'm sure you can feel it. You can eat meat as well as plants. I, I do feel different. Flutter dragged the guard over by a leg, drawing blood which Pinky could smell. She set him down, and Pinky could see, much to her surprise, he was still breathing. I saved one for dinner. She smiled at Pinky. Your dinner is my dear Pink Amina Dion Pie. Pinky gulped nervously. But he's still alive. Blackthorn nudged Pinky. Of course, dead flesh is not as good as warm, living flesh. He smiled down at the guard, grabbing his head and looking into his eyes. Soaked with fear, the flesh tastes divine. Pinky looked up into the guard's eyes, her crooked and insane face appearing suddenly. You don't say! She licked her lips. Flutter tapped the guard's neck. It's best if you drink them dry first. That way there's less of a bloody mess to clean up afterwards. She then glanced at Carrot Top, keeping her as a pet. Black Thumb flashed a dark grin at Carrot Top. You could say that. Her mind was not strong. I broke her so easily. Pinkie Pie is something special. She's strong, like we are. He smiled at the pink mare. So, go on and eat. Pinkie nodded and carefully ran her fangs along the guard's neck. She shivered in delight as she felt the pulse and bit down, piercing his jugular. The hot, coppery blood filled her mouth and poured down her throat. The sensation was familiar, like when Pinky consumed her favorite baked cook goodies. She always felt really good while eating and simply loved the sugar rush afterwards. How would she feel after drinking the stallion's blood? She wanted to know as she gulped greedily. She could feel his pulse slowing and finally stopping as she sucked the last bit drops of blood from him. Stepping back, Pinky felt the rush flow through her entire body. It was not the sugary rush from sweets, but a power rush. She felt better in every way. Did you enjoy that, dear? Blackthorn smiled. Oh yes, very much. She licked her lips. I, I feel so much better than ever before. Pinky looked down and could see his eyes quivering in fear, even though his chest had stopped moving. He's still alive? Flutter nuzzled Pinky affectionately. Of course. My venom keeps the brain alive. She glanced at Pinky's full belly. Are you full? I'm stuffed. Pinky patted her belly. And I'm starting to feel really tired. Then we should return to Ponyville. I don't want the ponies to get suspicious. Pinky smiled sweetly, but there was a slight twisted edge. <laughs> of course. I hope I can come back soon. You will, Blackthorn smiled. My blood will slowly change you. It might be a little frightening and painful at some times, though. Pinky nodded. I understand. She then turned to Flutter. Let's go home, but first... She turned and grinned madly down at the guard, her eyes showing how drunk she was on this new power. Pinky by drew his dagger. Dot, dot, dot. Rarity awoke a little earlier than she had attended. Fluttershy was not in bed, and she wanted to panic. Then she heard the ruckus outside, a few screams of terror. Rushing downstairs and outside, Rarity felt her stomach heave. Pony skins had been stretched out on frames, 
and sat in a circle in the town square. One skin really caught Rarity's attention. Captain Crystal Dash's coat and mane were unmistakable. Oh, Celestia, she gasped. She turned and rushed back inside. Oh, dear Celestia, what happened last night? All the royal gods? Skinned? Skinned? Fluttershy's voice gasped. Rarity looked up the stairs and saw Fluttershy standing in the bathroom doorway. Oh, Fluttershy, it's horrible. All the royal gods that came to Ponyville, they've all been killed last night. Oh, no. Even Crystal? Dashie's dad? Please, don't go outside. It's so horrible. Rarity felt her stomach heave again. She rose past the yellow Pegasus and into the bathroom. Fluttershy smiled acutely once the door slammed shut. Oh, Rarity, you're just so innocent. She trotted down the stairs and looked out the window. Pinkie Pie sure did a wonderful job, all in just an hour. She certainly is talented with the blade. She closed the curtain and entered the kitchen, waiting for Rarity. I wonder how today is going to turn out. Pinkie Pie was all smiles again. Her mane and tail, Ollie, were still straight. She admired herself in the mirror. Her sharp teeth, which she could make look like pony teeth. Her blood, red eyes, that could become blue. She could feel the changes that were happening inside of her, and they were a little uncomfortable. Perhaps, when the major changes happen, then she might feel the pain again. She simply wondered, How long until I'm beautiful like Flutter? <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. I don't know why I started singing. Uh, chapter 12, Flutter 12. This chapter, we're just killing everyone now. It was surprisingly, it seemed really short compared to other chapters, but I don't think it's as short as the other chapters. I don't know why. So yeah, uh, now Captain's dead. Pinkie Pie is officially a monster. You know what? I can't read right now. It's like late at night. I'm surprised I actually got through that. Flutter 12 was nice. We didn't get to see any of Twilight. I am really tired right now. I'm just going to go to bed. Uh, see you tomorrow, probably. I don't know. I'm going to a concert thing, so I don't know what time I want to have. I'm probably just going to get up early in the morning and do this. Man, I am not really doing good for my health. Ciao!